Hi friends, welcome back to 10 Minute Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain a sci-fi, adventure film from 2017 titled, Time Trap. The movie has a very unique concept about time, so make sure you watch it till the end. Our movie opens with Hopper, an archaeology professor and his dog, Boss, are looking for his family who disappeared after descending in a cave while looking for the Fountain of Youth back in the 1970s. He then notices there is a cave far in the distance. Upon arrival at the entrance of the cave, he sees a cowboy man whose gun and attire don't seem to be from our generation, seemingly frozen in time. Shocked with the discovery, Hopper turns back and gets back home. Apparently, he had set up this exploration trip with his teaching assistants, Taylor and Jackie. But, after Hopper arrives at home, he tells them that the situation has changed and the professor decides to go back to the cave alone. As Hopper enters the cave, he discovers there is a layer that separates the atmosphere between the outside world and the cave. He decides to break through the layer and the cowboy man he found at the previous visit starts to move. It has been two days since the professor's departure, but until now Taylor and Jackie haven't heard anything from him. So they decide to look for him. Because they don't have their own SUV, they call Kara, Taylor's crush, and ask her to borrow her dad's SUV. Apparently, Veeves, Kara's sister, also has a school project to do, so Kara decides to take her as well. They are also accompanied by Veeves's friend, Furby. Yeah, another child on a life-threatening expedition. Because, why not? The kids arrive and find Hopper's parents' van where they discover that the professor all this time is seeking for his family at the cave, not some hippies from the 70s they were told before. They then find an old rope that leads them into a different part of the cave. There, they find the rope had been cut off and learn that it is not Hopper's rope as it is already very old. They also discover that the cave is very deep. The kids decide to descend further into the cave, leaving Furby to keep watch because he is too afraid to join them. While going down, Kara discovers the same invisible layer that Hopper found earlier, claiming that it changes the air completely. They decide to break through the layer. Back to Hopper, a moments later after he follows the cowboy man, he starts to feel something strange. He notices a strange dance of light. It is as if someone is constantly dimming and brightening the entrance of the cave with a huge flash or something. After that, he suddenly hears a screaming voice and escapes from the cave. As we see previously, Hopper entered the cave when the sun was still shining, but only less than five minutes inside. The outside world has become very different as his car is covered by overgrowth plants and it is already night. It just seems like a couple minutes in the cave is equivalent to decades outside. He also finds Kara's SUV and Jackie's backpack, so he decides to get back into the cave. Back to the kids, as they begin to explore, they suddenly hear screaming voices and the girls decide to leave from the cave, starting with Jackie. But the rope suddenly gets cut off and she falls off, injuring both Jackie and Taylor who tries to save her. Taylor then pulls the second rope, finding that one to be cut off as well. The group begins to think that it is Furby who purposely cuts the rope for messing around. They try to communicate with Furby from the radio, but he does not respond. Eventually, they hear some muffled sounds from the radio asking for help, claiming that it is Furby. Left with no option, the group decide to move further inside the cave, leaving the injured Jackie alone. At the other side of the cave, the group discovers a cut-off rope and Furby's dead body, with a broken neck. They then replay the recording from Furby's camera to see what happened to him. Furby reveals from the Hopper's dad's journal that the cave keeps magic water that heals people. Because Hopper's sister got sick, the family decides to go to the cave looking for the water. After spending several days outside the cave, Furby decides he is going to go in looking for his friend, who he's presumed dead, for the car keys. It is a whole day for him, the rest of the group only experience seconds inside the cave. As Furby enters, his rope gets cut, causing him to fall, but doesn't die. He lies there unconscious for about an hour and wakes up to talk to Taylor, but suddenly a caveman attacks and kills him. Veeves also spots something nonsense as the time code from the recording spans several days while they only have been in the cave for an hour. Because both Taylor and Jackie are injured, only Kara and Veeves are left to find a way out and call for help. Because Veeves is younger, Kara decides to climb up the same way they came down and manages to come out to find a completely different place. Now, there is no sign of vegetation and the air also feels weird causing Kara to have difficulty breathing. She also spots a huge dust storm coming her way. She then discovers a massive triangle-shaped object in the sky. Unable to call for help, she goes back inside to the cave but is accused by others for not even trying to get help. She is being accused because only a couple of seconds had passed in the cave, while she had been outside for about 30 minutes. 
the group realizes that the time outside the cave is running faster than inside the cave, causing the event inside the cave to move more slowly. Taylor also adds that the ropes at the top of the cliff are aging at a rapid rate, causing them to sever due to the friction with the cliff side. Because of that, Veeves rewatches the recording of Furby's footage, realizing that the sun paths keep changing. She also reveals that the bright is summer and the dark is winter, making one cycle of seasons seen in only about one second, which means an entire year passes by in only a second. So, we can calculate and discover that approximately 5,400 years have passed on the Earth since they have been in the cave. When Kara attempts to climb on the cliff one more time, suddenly a very futuristic and high-tech ladder pops down into the cave along with a giant being covered in spacesuit. Out of nowhere, a caveman appears and begins to attack the giant, but is subdued non-lethally. The group decides to run away to another part of the cave. There, they find the dead bodies of the cowboy man and Hopper's parents. They are also confronted by three other cavemen. Taylor decides to fight the cavemen, but is killed brutally, while the girls flee to the other side of the cave. Kara comes back and finds his dead body. While crying over him, she is confronted by the alien giant. He picks up Taylor's body and drags him to the pool of water. Magically, the water manages to bring Taylor back to life. The cavemen come back and attack the giant, knocking off his helmet which exposes him to the air he is not able to breathe. Even so, he still manages to capture all the cavemen. Before he dies, he shows the group several media clips about their disappearance and indicating that humans have begun to move to another planet in order to preserve humanity. At this point, the group realizes that there is no way back and they must decide whether they have to get out there right now or live there forever. But, Taylor eventually finds a mortally injured Hopper in front of another thicker layer of wall, containing Hopper's long-missing sister and frozen folks from various eras who are fighting to seize the youth fountain. Hopper explains that the whole cave is a system which was designed to protect the fountain and each layer has a different speed, making the time in the deeper layer much slower than the previous layer. The group uses the water to heal the injured Jackie and dead Furby, but they are being attacked by the remaining caveman. Since they have nowhere to go, they decide to use the high-tech ladder from the giant to climb outside the cave. As they reach the cave's mouth, they discover that the entrance has been filled by water. Kara tries to break through the layer, but suddenly is yanked by strange creatures, which turns out later to be a further evolved human. A moments later, a fully suited Kara returns to the cave, followed by high-tech rope to retrieve everyone from the cave, including Furby, Hopper, and Hopper's parents. At the end of the film, Furby, Hopper, his parents and sister are all brought back to life. They are now on the bigger spaceship that is headed towards the new Earth, and who knows what's coming next. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you did, subscribe if you're new. And at last, I'll say stay well, stay safe, thanks.